welcome to the Cave of Science for our meteorology review, and uh, may the force be with you. Well, one of the first problems you're going to have on the test is uh, to convert from UTC or Zulu time to local time, and then from local time back to UTC time. And as you can see from this slide, and I'll give you something very similar, similar to this, that if you want to go from, uh, let's say, Mountain Standard Time to uh, UTC time, you would take whatever time it is, a minus seven hours. So let's say we had a UTC or Zulu time of uh, 1700, we would minus the seven hours and we'd be at 1000. And so that's how you do that. And again, you, we, we've done a number of these, I'd go back and refer to that. If you want to get local time to UTC, you got to add five if we're using Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you review those, that material that we did uh, in class on that worksheet. Make sure you know your layers of the atmosphere. We had uh, four layers we worked with, as you can see here, the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. And then also make sure you remember the uh, where it changes in temperature, the tropopause, stratopause, and mesopause. The other thing, remember, we really talked about the troposphere as where weather occurs and into the stratosphere that was where the ozone layer was. So uh, also remember that in the troposphere you have a decrease, stratosphere is an increase in temperature, and then we decrease in the mesosphere and then increase in the thermosphere. Composition of air, mostly nitrogen, 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen. And the other 1% is just various other gases. Remember, the composition of the air does not change. Whether you're at sea level or whether you're on top of Mount Everest, it's still 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, but just the total amount of air is reduced when you're at, a, at altitude, such as on the top of a Mount Everest. Make sure you review the uh, phase change of water latent energy. And we uh, went over this in class, and really this, this is the whole key to the whole idea of uh, the formation of clouds. And by the way, clouds will not be on this assessment. So when we go from melting to evaporation, heat energy is taken from the environment and it is stored in the water. As water condenses, that, uh, as water condenses, it releases that energy to the environment. And that's that whole idea of latent energy. Uh, we cover this pretty thoroughly in your notes, so make sure you, you uh, go back and review that. This is why clouds will have a tendency to grow because as that water vapor inside a cloud condenses, it releases the energy inside the cloud, and the inside the cloud has a greater temperature than the outside. Isobars. We did the uh, activity oh, where you colored in the different isobars. Isobars are lines that connect points of equal pressure. And then remember, uh, wind always flows from a high pressure to a low pressure. And one key thing to note on isobars is that the closer the isobars are together, the higher the wind speed. If you did any topography maps, it was it's kind of the same uh, idea as that. Closer lines, steeper terrain. Where the lines are spread farther apart, the lower the wind speed. So when you see them really tight in here, like in this low pressure, that's pretty high wind speeds. Heat transfer was one of the first worksheets we did. Uh, the whole idea of conduction, convection, radiation. So make sure you review those terms. Mid-latitude cyclone or mid-latitude wave, sometimes we refer to it. And this is all, we're going to look at one of these. Now, I'm going to go over one of these uh, right now. So we have a cold, or excuse me, we have a warm front here. And it is the uh, half circles. And behind this whole idea of this uh, mid-latitude wave here, we have what's called the warm sector. Actually, uh, as I'm recording this, we are definitely getting in the warm sector right now. Uh, cold front, cold air behind it. Occluded uh, front, when a, a cold front overtakes a warm front. The other thing to uh, remember here also is that, uh, go back to your, uh, your air masses. 
the two big air masses which really affect the middle section of the United States are the maritime tropical out of the Gulf of Mexico and that's that one that moves from us uh, south to north and the other one is the continental polar coming from uh, our buddies up in Canada those are the two big air masses which affect us uh, most of our weather travels as you know from the southwest to the northeast and also the jet stream pushes much of these mid-latitude cyclones across the continental United States. So we have all these things going on at the same time. You're going to need to calculate a relative humidity. We did a, a couple different activities on that with a sling psychrometer. And if you go back and review those, essentially you're going to get a table and the uh, dry bulb minus the wet bulb is across the x-axis or across the top and then the dry ball reading and then you find the intersection point so if we had a dry ball reading of 13 and a difference between dry bulb and wet bulb of 4 we'd have a relative humidity of 50 or excuse me uh, I guess if we're doing 4 and uh, 13 is fine we'd have a relative humidity of 59 percent go back and review those two exercises we did on relative humidity climate controls right off the lectures we covered in class uh, latitude again uh, the lower the latitude the more solar radiation we're going to uh, occur on the earth how close you are to water the closer you are to water it moderates the temperature of that particular area and we'll see that this winter especially as we uh, get into a little bit colder weather the lakeshore communities are going to have a slightly higher temperature than the communities inland. Altitude and elevation, again, the higher you go up into the uh, atmosphere, the colder it gets. Uh, proximity to mountains, we didn't cover that one in class. Well, we did with the adiabatic lapse rate. If you're on the leeward side, you're going to be warmer than the windward side. Ocean currents, we saw the, uh, the whole idea of ocean currents, especially along uh, the east coast of the United States going up into uh, Great Britain and then also the, the prevailing winds. Another climate control we talked about in class was cloud cover. During the day cloud cover keeps the temperatures cooler and at night cloud cover keeps the temperatures warmer. Make sure you review the whole idea of lake effect snow. We're going to get into that uh, more or I guess we're going to experience it more as the temperatures get a little colder. But suffice it to say as the cold air and we can think about in our neck of the woods across uh, from Wisconsin blows over Lake Michigan and Lake Michigan is warmer than the air they're going to have that moisture evaporating into the atmosphere and then as uh, that air gets over the land it starts to uh, the air starts to condense the moisture starts to condense and if it's cold enough it's going to fall out as snow and we talked a little bit about US uh, 131 is kind of the, the cutoff around here for uh, lake effect snow. The longer the air stays over the water, the more lake effect snow there's going to be. Make sure you go back and review your adiabatic temperature changes. There, are, there will be a problem on that. So make sure you look at that. And remember that you use the dry adiabatic rate until you reach the dew, po dew point. And at the dew point, you use the wet adiabatic rate till you get to the top of the mountain. Coming down on the uh, the leeward side, you only use the dry adiabatic rate. So make sure you go back and review those problems we did in class. Uh, station model, you did several of these. Uh, this one's pretty good. Uh, there's only one piece of information we won't use on here. But you need to know cloud cover. So this one's about 50%. Wind direction and the staff always points into the wind so this one's coming uh, from the northeast air temperature so we're looking at 50 degrees here dew point 42 and then the uh, air pressure and this one seeing it's between 0 and 5 you add a 10 move the decimal point one to the left so it would be 1019.6 that would be the pressure remember if it's uh, greater than 5 you would add a 9 here and one thing as, as you start looking at these things make sure you can interpret the uh, temperature dew point cloud cover and pressure if you're going to have rain or precipitation the temperature and the dew point are going to be pretty close together 
you're going to have cloud cover in here and also you're going to have low pressure if the uh, atmosphere is clear it's a nice day typically these two numbers are going to be farther apart this one won't show any cloud cover and you'll have a higher pressure here remember we're going to use uh, approximately 1013 millibars as kind of standard atmospheric pressure there so again uh, review those problems that you did in class Global pressure and winds, uh, make sure you go over those again. Suffice it to say, the equatorial have a low, and then you have the subtropical high. And then we had another low at about 60 degrees north, and then we had a polar high. So I always like to remember low, high, low, high, and winds always flow from a high pressure to a low pressure. And in the northern hemisphere, they're shifted to the right because of the Coriolis effect. So make sure you go over those uh, particular things on that diagram. And so the ones which really affect the continental United States, and this is 30 degrees here, and this is 60, the U.S. You know, falls right into these, uh, the westerlies here. Interesting uh, note here, you get to the equatorial low, that's where you have your rainforest, you know, your jungles. Uh, much of your large uh, global deserts are located in this subtropical high at about 30 degrees north and south latitude. Make sure you check out your meteogram, the activity on that. A couple things to note on any meteogram, and we'll just start reading this one from left to right as it's the time is on the uh, x-axis here. When you have the, uh, the dew point and the air temperature right at the same here, you can see that they're the, really following the same curve here that's going to be a low-lying cloud or you're going to get fog and so you see fog in here and then as the day works off it gets a little warmer you can see the two temperatures change here you got a sudden drop of temperature and you see some thunderstorms coming in and typically when you have this really quick drop of temperature that is a cold front working its way through an area and again you can see that the temperature and the dew point are close together so you would expect some type of precipitation so when you look at the fog, you really don't see much of an intense drop in temperature. They just kind of hang on to each other, and that's when you have the fog.